regarding uh, justice from uh, my written diaries. Yes, regarding justice from my written diaries. June 27, 1968. 1968. Cops started coming every evening, sometimes twice. Someone's every night, sometimes twice. We, called, we collected a pile of them. The cops told me that they would appreciate a few bucks. They stand in the dark corridors and wait. Eventually, I made them understand that I'm not going to pay them. So they laugh and write another summons. June 29, 1968. The cop came into our office. He looked like a captain. He said he has 18 or so men under him. Once a month, he will send someone to collect money. It's up to us to decide how much we want to pay every month. If we don't pay, we'll be closed. He said he will be back on Monday to get our answer. This, I said, we have to talk this thing amongst ourselves. Now, this is a little bit closer to reality. July 2nd, 1968. I set up uh, hidden cameras all over the cinema tech uh, to cover our meeting with the money cops. It would make a perfect film for the New York Film Festival. <laughs> the cop doesn't show up. Instead, another cop comes in the evening during the show and writes us another summons. July 26, 1968. Myself, with Richard, we go to the criminal court, part 6B or part 6, I don't remember which. I noticed that part written in big letters. When one reads through the glass door from inside, it reads trap in big letters, trap. Richard has a batch of summons and I have four or five. We sit there on the bench. There are not 15 other people sitting. Silence. A green tree behind the window. Hollow steps. Judge comes in. He sits down. Doesn't look very happy. Bad news. And it shows. He seems to want to do something today. He wants to act as the straightening hand of the city. Of course, of course, it doesn't matter that this is part uh, uh, trap, uh, he, that in this part of trap, he has to deal only with small offenders. He will show them how to respect the law. He lifts his voice. He talks to a tall black man, a worker, he scolds him about something. I try to listen. I try it very I try it very hard. I'm curious. But the hollowness of the place eats up the words before they reach me. I try to listen, but all I hear is 30 days in jail and no suspension. And to set an example, to set an example, to set an example? What the hell will, who the hell will know you sent this man to 30 days in jail? How can you talk about setting an example when even I, who's sitting here in the court, have no idea why he's going to jail? 
Next, next he scolded a black woman and gave her $50 fine or one day in jail. His mood gets worse and worse as the day progresses. Our turn comes and we stand there and he looks at us and then he says he will call us again. We sit down. He manages to send a few more people with fines. Once he smiled. I didn't catch what was behind it, what kind of smile that was. Our second call comes. We stand there and he begins to shout, literally, to shout, how did you dare commit all these crimes? I should put you on bail right now. I should send you to prison. How dare you commit all these crimes? How did you dare to run a theater without a license? Jack Thurman, our attorney, he tries to say something. Your honor, your honor. He's sweating it out. He says something about how we are working hard, etc. But his honor is in a bad mood. And we are two perfect victims, intelligentsia, and Richard has a mustache, and I look a perfect criminal type, a sly fish, no doubt, a smarty who runs probably a huge theater, maybe like Paramount, another one of those clever guys who wants to steal millions from the city. So we stand there, and our legs are shaking, and his honor concludes. If you dare run the theater again this evening, I'm going to arrest you. So I say, no, sir, I give my word. We are not going to run the theater tonight. He expresses some doubts about my work. Anyway, Jack gets it postponed to September 12th. We didn't even dare mention other summonses. The judge said 100 for the first offense. There is no rule how much you have to pay for the second. Since I have seven or eight summonses on my name, and Richard has seven or eight on his name, we have a good 10 years of jail coming, or $100,000 in fines. So I said to myself, I should be quiet like a mouse. I clenched my teeth, I swallowed whatever I felt like saying, and I kept my teeth and my blood until I was out in the street. I looked at the sun, trying to get back my faith in humanity. I failed. I still felt like a, like a louse. The judge, in this bad, morning mood splashes, splashes shit on people and then it's up to the people to clean it up. There were at least three lawyers present in the court but not a single one, one expressed any surprise at the judge's moods. None of them protested. It was all very normal. But people should walk out of the courtroom and ask for other judge when a judge walks in and begins to display his moods. They should ask for their money back, so to speak. I was angry as I walked uptown to Wooster Street. I thought the ground will open and swallow the whole city any second, but it didn't. So I continued walking. 